Okay, hello. Uh, this is Thomas Zacharias and Nikos Alexopoulos. We are talking, we're going to talk about MC Mix, which is the second anonymous communication result from uh, Panoramics project. This is a joint work with Agelos Kegias from uh, the University of Edinburgh and uh, Rivot Alviste from San Bernetka Company in Estonia. Just a short intro about anonymous communications, as you probably know, TLS was designed to hide the context of the communication between two users. However, regarding metadata, like the identities of the users, the timing and the location of uh, the communication is something that TLS is not designed to handle. Anonymous communications that are supposed to hide the metadata had a breakthrough in early 80s when Chaum introduced the MixNet concept and later on uh, followed up with the DCNet uh, notion. And then Chaumian design uh, inspired the Onion Routing project introduced in the 90s that later on put forth very important uh, applied research like the FlirNet and Tor, which is now the most widely used anonymous tool, anonymous communication tool. Regarding the security of Onion Routing, uh, as was already discussed, Tor is supposed to provide security and anonymity against an adversary who has a local control over the network. But when a global adversary comes that has a full surveillance, then this cannot hold. Towards the goal of protecting the anonymity of people um, against global adversaries, during the last decade there were several systems that uh, they were proposed. Even though we're going to say a few more words later on in the talk, uh, I will just briefly mention that up to our, uh, up to our, wor up to our work, the status was that you could run other, either in systems like Ripost and Rifle, where there were strong cryptographic techniques at the cost of having some communication or complexity bot uh, bottleneck at some point of the execution. And on the other hand, you have a system like Bubuzela, where there is uh, a lower latency, However, the security guarantees were up to differential privacy, whereas there is a high client load for the dialing round. And I should mention that this slide does not include the very cool looping system that was concurrently designed. So this was our motivation before starting to build up our system. So our goal is, is it possible to come up with an anonymous messaging system that provides provable simulation-based security according to the cryptographic standards, which means you don't leak any metadata besides the fact that a dynamic user set uh, is active against a global adversary. And can you do that with some reasonable latency, let's say around a minute, uh, a minute without putting much burden on the client load? Our contributions are that we design MCMix, which is an anonymous messaging system that takes a novel approach by utilizing multi-party computation of some fast and uh, recently proposed oblivious sorting algorithms. And we prove the security of our uh, system under the formal cryptographic model in the simulation-based security paradigm. In, we implement our, uh, as a proof of concept, the server side of our uh, system in the Sermind MPC platform in the cybernet company, and Revo was the one who, do that, who did that. And we benchmarked our implementation, indicating that the system, uh, within a one-minute latency, can handle a number of 100,000 active users. As ongoing work of, to further improve efficiency, we designed and evaluated a parallelized version of the conversation protocol that, as long as the islands of MPC servers increase, you further gain uh, in terms of efficiency. So I will start saying about a few words about the client secure MPC model and how it works. So the concept in MPC is assume that we have four users that want to compute their in the evaluation of their inputs uh, in some function without, of course, revealing any information about their inputs. So the way to do that could be that you provide an encoding of your inputs into some MPC cluster that does the job for you and uh, this computation can uh, withstand a corruption of uh, some number of servers. So what it means to be secure for this setting? It means that 
we could envision that we could replace the MPC system with some ideal functionality which is supposed to do the job in Wynn's evaluation of F that would take the inputs, would just provide the outputs, and this would, would be all. And of course, we can augment the model by adding uh, the, to the functionality um, the, the ability of sending some minimum leakage, what, where what minimum leakage is, is with respect to our uh, implementation. So for example, it could be, if you want to idealize a secure channel, it could be, I give out the message length, but nothing more than that. So the security says in the simulation-based setting that an adversary cannot distinguish whether it talks with the ideal functionality and all this minimum leakage that could be, and uh, or whether this side or the actual MPC setting. The next step that comes is what, we, what do we mean by ideally modeling and anonymous messaging? So we see that, inspired by the Vuvuzela approach, uh, as a part which is the dial functionality, which is like a, how you can make a phone call so that two users can agree on some rendezvous point that we call a dead drop. And then there is the conversation step where the people that agree in the dead drops actually exchange messages. This concept is just for generality. So it could be the case that if in a messaging system that uses like a back and forth mixnet, dialing would not exist, but we just had conversation exchange messages. This is conceptual in order to capture what anonymous messaging is. According to this setting, what would be to have an ideal uh, dialing functionality? You would have the users uh, sending idea, a dial and dial check requests to this ideal functionality. That functionality, what we do internally is to compute these random dead drops in the manner that the dial and dial checks that match will have the same dead drop and the functionality will send the same dead drop to the users. The next thing is what would be an ideal conversation functionality? So now we have the users having requests of dead drops and messages and they want to communicate. So they would provide the messages to the ideal functionality the functionality would check whether the dead drops match and would exchange the messages. A question that comes is that this ideal setting, is it feasible? So in terms of feasibility, it is. Assume a solution, a trivial solution that everybody talks with each other, everybody dialects checks over every time, and they send some full cover traffic uh, in order to cover uh, with noise messages the actual conversation. This complete network solution achieves this simulation-based security, but of course, as you can understand, cannot scale and cannot be deployed in a reasonable real-world setting. So going away from feasibility to practice, the design challenge is, can we approximate the security requirements of this ideal standard and still be scalable to, let's say, a number of 100,000 users with a reasonable latency? So this is, again, the design challenge for MC Mix. A few words about the architecture of the system. We have the users, of course, and the server side consists of the MPC server system and an entry server that receives the user's inputs, providing them to the MPC system, and then the output server that will receive the MPC output and send it back to the users. Um, I want to stress that the entry and output servers could be a part of the MPC system, but just for conceptually, we separate them as functionalities. The way that communication between users and MPC servers works is in an authenticated server-wise manner. I will talk about it in more detail in the next slide. So this means that the user will um, compute a share of their input and will communicate and send to the server, server authenticated encryptions of its share. Upon receiving the encrypted shares, the MPC servers can execute the computation uh, according to the MPC standards securely as, for example, ShareMind dies in our, in our implementation. Another point that I would like to note is that in our uh, implementation, in order to compute the dead drops, we're going to utilize key agreement. So actually, the dead drop is a key agreed value. We turned out to what is called an identity-based key agreement, uh, which is that we can have the MPC servers running as a distributed key generation center that sends some secret keys to the, to the users, like the identity-based cryptography does, so that they can compute a secret key. And having this setting, the advantage of uh, identity-based uh, uh, cryptography is that you can compute the other person's public key just by knowing the username. 
So the reason we turn to this solution is just to circumvent the need for a PKI. But of course, if the problem of PKI is already solved, then we can just use classical PKI like Diffie Hellman to do that. So a few more details of how a setup worked before Nikos starts taking the actual flow of the protocol. During registration, the, uh, a user will uh, um, establish a secure channel with the MPC servers and uh, obtain the symmetric uh, authenticated encryption keys that are going to be used for communication with the, the MPC platform. Again, I want to stress that every communication between the user and the servers is with symmetric encryption. The public keys that are going to co be computed or the key agreement keys are just for the computation of the deadlocks. There is no public key crypto done in the computation. And as I said uh, before, the server will receive the shares of identity key agreement keys so that they can establish this uh, identity-based public key setting. Um, then, after this has been done, uh, the user will have a request and can share a request. If we have three servers, like Sherman does, we'll have three shares. It will encrypt its share under the symmetric authenticated encryption key of uh, each server and send, it, send the request to the entry server that will forward it to the MPC server according to the server that each server should suppose to go. Then the servers do what we say the order check. So they agree that the series of the of a sequence of inputs that the entry server has provided to its server is the same. And after this check uh, happens, they decrypt the search and run the MPC protocol as explained before. The output uh, of uh, the computation will be again be encrypted in order to be provided server-wise to the users. So they will send it to the output server, which is in charge of providing the encrypted search of the outputs to the respective users. The respective users will decrypt with symmetric encryption and reconstruct the result, which is their personal output of the computation for this round. And now Nikos is going to continue. So how, how do we realize these two ideal functionalities? We would do so with two protocols, so the dialing protocol and the conversation protocol. And as a reminder, the dialing protocol allows two users to agree on a dead drop, and the conversation uh, allows them to exchange messages through this agreed dead drop. So uh, l let's see dialing. So I'm going to show you an, an example of how dialing works. Look at the first row. The, the first input is a dial from user 1 to user 3. The second is a dial check marked with this C symbol from user 2. And User 3 also dial checks. The next input is a dial from user 4 to user 2. And the, the next input is actually a dial check for user 1, but this was uh, an input of another user. So this is a problem. And the final input is a dial from user 6 to user 1. So as a first step uh, to our protocol, we assign this integer value, the wire ID, to each input. We will uh, see later what this serves. And we proceed to do this validity check to neutralize impersonation attempts. So uh, the, the protocol checks that at least one of the first two coordinates is the actual uh, user who submitted this input. And this can be checked because the inputs are submitted through authenticated cryptography. Then we will sort these inputs according to their second coordinate. We have this uh, test example of this uh, sorting. So the actual dialing uh, will go as follows. So after sorting, inputs with the same second coordinate are guaranteed to be next to each other. So a dial will have a dial, uh, a dial check will have a dial if it exists in, a, in the, the position next to it. So what we do is we go pairwise and check and if we find uh, a dial check, for example, that is performed by user 2, and a dial from user 4 to user 2, we forward this dial to the tuple of user uh, that was submitted by user 2. Then we have to sort again in order for uh, each user to get their intended output. So we use the wire IDs to sort. And as you can see in the last step, user 2 has received user four, user's 4 uh, username, which signals a dial from user 4. And the same happens for the other user 3, who was dialed by user 1. 
Then the actual dead drop is calculated through a hash of the key agreement uh, value, which is similar to a Diffie-Hellman key exchange, non-interactive, and the round number. And uh, both users, the dialer and the dial E, can calculate this value, and it is easy to see that it will be equal. What about the conversation protocol now? So each user calculates the dead drop, as described before, encrypts the message end-to-end, -end, either with the IDKA key or with, a, with another key shared through another channel, and prepares the input of the form dead drop, message, and zero, which is just a flag now, creates a sh secret sharing of this input, encrypts the shares uh, with the keys of the servers, and sends them to the input server. So the message format is as uh, mentioned. The protocol input is this sequence. And the output should be uh, um, a message that is the result of a swap of messages between dead drops that have the same uh, value. So if user A wants to communicate with user B and they have the same dead drop, their message will be swapped, and each one will get the other one's message that was intended for them. I will not give an example of this, but it's very similar to dialing. So we first do a sort to, according to the dead drop values. Again, equal dead drops will be next to each other. We can do a pairwise uh, search on this vector and swap messages. Then we will uh, sort according to the wire IDs to return the messages to their intended recipients. Just a quick note about dead drops. They are 64-bit uh, long in this design. And uh, even if we have an accidental collision, this is just handled by transmitting the messages again in the next round. So regarding the security of MCMix, we have proven that we have uh, simulation-based security. So assuming an MBC platform P that is secure against corruption of K out of M MBC servers, MCMix realizes the ideal functionality uh, when implemented over P against a computationally bound global adversary. More specifically, in our implementation, we use the ShareMind MPC platform that is passively secure against one out of three server corruption. Our design also includes verification mechanisms that prevent active attacks from the network. So the network adversary is active, and the entry and output servers are in the model uh, of this adversary. An interesting result is the security of the whole system matches the threat model of the underlying MPC platform. So if we have another MPC platform that is covertly secure or actively secure and we plug it into the system, then the complete security of the system will match this. Now a few words about the performance of this uh, system. So we benchmarked in a local area network with artificial latency um, and one gigabit PS connection between servers, three servers. For the dialing protocol, uh, we can see that it can serve 100,000 users with a latency of around one minute, half a million with a latency of around five minutes, which is actually not very bad because dialing need not be performed very often. And another uh, observation is that the effect of network latency diminishes as uh, the user number increases. Well, the conversation protocol with uh, the same length as the dead drops, which is 8-byte messages, is practically very similar uh, to the dialing protocol, and this is expected because the algorithm is very similar. When we have uh, bigger message sizes, we see that this affects performance, and we see that MCMix can support 100,000 users with a latency uh, of over a minute, a little bit over a minute, for SMS size 144 bytes and 10,000 users for big messages of one kilobytes. Um, regarding the bandwidth between the servers, we see that it remains in, uh, in, in, in a reasonable level between 150 and 300 megabits per second uh, with respect to the message size. What is very important to in, in incentivize people to use MCMix and to be active is that the client load will remain low. On the one hand, in, in the computation load, uh, the, uh, we, we only have symmetric encryption. So the computation load is low. And if we send a min, uh, message every one minute and we have some number of symmetric encryption operations, then uh, this is negligible. 
So with respect to the bandwidth cost of the client devices, we have made calculations show that with SMS and length messages, the bandwidth per month would be in the realm of uh, 70, 78 megabytes, which is easily manageable by a broadband connection. So uh, going to a high level comparison of MC Mix with other systems, we, also, uh, we already talked about how Tor, uh, while very fast, cannot handle global adversaries. Uh, on the other hand, systems like Repost um, are based on very strong cryptographic primitives and also have a, a slightly different use case, that's the broadcasting. And for example, Repost takes hours to create large anonymity sets. Vuvuzela uses cover traffic, and so is fast, but the uh, security uh, properties differential privacy and simulation-based security, and also there is quite some load on the client device. Rifle is a static mixing design, which is very fast, but it cannot handle uh, easily users going in and out of the system. Finally, Pang uses uh, very strong private information retrieval uh, protocols and need not trust any server, but of course the performance is uh, considerably worse. As ongoing work, we are, we are developing an Android, an Android prototype for the client side of our protocol that will look something like this, and uh, Chris Campbell is doing a very good job of developing it. Uh, so you will be able to, to use this in a short time. Um, also, in our paper, and mostly in the extended version, we describe how we can parallelize the conversation protocol, which is actually a very nice idea. So the, the idea is that uh, we can have two MPC islands, so two islands consisting of, let's say, uh, three servers, and this is how they will process requests. So a client can connect to uh, any of these two islands and submit uh, conversation requests which of the form dead drop message. Then, if these two islands independently sort these requests, because dead drops are the, the result of a hash function and are uniformly distributed, low values of dead drops will end up in the lower half of the island, of the vector, and higher on the upper half. And the same will be true for the other island. Then, if they exchange, uh, for example, if island one gets the lower half of the other's island request and makes a swap operation on this set of requests, then most, most of the conversation uh, request will be executed um, so here we have a small drop in the quality of service, but we still keep uh, very high security guarantees and we can offer better scalability as illustrated by this uh, plot. So it's interesting to see that the two island case does not actually offer advantage because the protocol is heavier than uh, running two islands, but running with four or eight islands we can get considerable better performance and we envision to have uh, half a million users um, with eight islands. Finally, as future work, we intend to uh, utilize forward secure key exchange to provide a fully forward secure version of MC Mix. In the full version of the paper, we already have some uh, constructs regarding this. And we also intend to work more on the parallelized version. And finally, uh, optimize the specific algorithms that we use, the specific MPC algorithms we use. As a last thought, uh, we think that uh, with the recent explosion in interest in MPC and the improvements of protocols, this real-world uh, application will be a prime candidate for the application of this theoretical result. Thank you very much, and we are ready to answer your questions. Do we have any questions for the speakers? All right, let's thank the speakers again, and let's hear the next talk, please.